reading from the second book of Maccabees. It happened that seven brothers with their mother were arrested and tortured with whips and scourges by the king to force them to eat pork in violation of God's law. Most admirably and worthy of everlasting remembrance was the mother who saw her seven sons perish in a single day, yet bore it courageously because of her hope in the Lord. Filled with a noble spirit that stirred her womanly heart with manly courage, she exhorted each of them in the language of their ancestors with these words, I do not know how you came into existence in my womb. It was not I who gave you the breath of life. Nor was it I who set, set in the order the elements of which each of you is composed. Therefore, since it's the creature of the universe who shapes each create, since it's the creator of the universe who shapes each man's beginning, as he brings about the origin of everything, he and his mercy will give you back both breath and life, because you now disregard yourselves for the sake of his law. Antiochus, suspecting insult in her words, thought he was being ridiculed. As the youngest brother was still alive, the king appealed to him not with mere words, but with promises on oath to make him rich and happy if he would abandon his ancestral customs. He would make him his friend and entrust him with high office. When the youth paid no attention to him at all, the king appealed to the mother, urging her to advise her boy to save his life. After he had urged her for a long time, he went through the motions of persuading her son. After he had urged her for a long time, she went through the motions of persuading her son in derision of the cruel tyrant. She leaned over close to her son and said to her in her native language, Son, have pity on me, who carried you in my womb for nine months, nursed you for three years, brought you up, educated, and supported you to your present age. I beg you, child, to look at the heavens and the earth and see all that is in them. Then you will know that God did not make them out of existing things or in the same way the human race came into existence. Do not be afraid of this executioner, but worthy of your brothers and accept death, so that in the time of mercy I may receive you again with them. She had scarcely finished speaking when the youth said, What are you waiting for? I will not obey the king's command. I obey the command of the law given to our fathers through Moses. But you, who have been contrived every kind of affliction for the Hebrews, will not escape the hands of God. Verbum Domini. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be filled, full. Hear, O Lord, a just suit, attend to my outcry, hearken to my prayer from lips without deceit. My steps have been steadfast in your path, my feet have not, have not faltered. I call upon you, you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my word. Keep me as the apple of your eye, hide me in the shadow of your wings. But I in justice shall hold you, behold your face. On waking I shall be content in your presence. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I chose you from the world to go and bear fruit that will last says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Dominos Rabiscum, Lexio Sancte Evangelii Segundum Lucum. When people were listening to Jesus speak, he proceeded to tell them the parable because he was near Jerusalem and they thought the kingdom of God would appear there immediately. So he said a nobleman went off to a distant country to obtain the kingship for himself and then to return. He called ten of his servants and gave them ten gold coins and told them, Engage in trade with these until I return. His fellow citizens, however, despised him and sent a delegation after him to announce, We do not want this man to be our king. And when he returned after attaining the kingship, he had his servants called to whom he had given the money. Uh, to learn what they had gained by trading, the first one came forward and said, Sir, your gold coin has, had, has, has earned ten additional ones. He said, Well done, good servant. You have been faithful in this very small matter. Take charge of ten cities. 
Then the second came and reported your gold coin, sirs, earn five. And to this the servant said, Two, you take charge of five cities. Then the other servant came and said, Sir, this is your gold coin. I kept it stored away in a handkerchief, for I was afraid of you because you're a demanding man. Take up what you did not lay down and harvest what you did not plant. He said to him, With your own words I shall condemn you, you wicked servant. You knew I was a de demanding man, taking up what I did not lay down, harvesting what I did not plant. Why did you not put my money in a bank? Then on my return I would have collected it with interest. And to those standing by, I said, Take the gold coin from him and give it to the serv servant who has ten. They, but they said to him, Sir, he has ten coins. He replied, I tell you, to everyone who has, more will be given, but from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Now as for those enemies of mine who did not want me to be their king, bring them here and slay them before me. After he had said this, he proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. Burbum Domini. Well, my brothers and sisters in Christ, so two days in a row, we have uh, profound stories from the second book of Maccabee, right? Uh, Eleazar yesterday and him not wanting to even give the perception of scandal. And then the woman today, the mother with the seven sons who were murdered, martyred, uh, without uh, uh, even flinching in her faith, was willing to sacrifice her seven sons uh, for uh, a God, right, for, uh, for her faith and how profound that is. And then, uh, you know, a, a funny thought came to my mind while I was reading the gospel that if those ten servants today in the gospel had been paying attention when we just had the gospel yesterday and the day before about the servants, right? All right, the one dude would have known that you got to put it at least in the bank and earn some interest, right? You know, just just bury it or put it in the handkerchief, right? So again, we come down to this very profound saying, and I've, I've meditated on this so much over the years, right? To those who have been given much, even more will be given. And to those who have little, even the little they have will be taken from them. And again, you know, we can talk about God's grace. Uh, we can talk about love. But really, the perfect word is mercy. To those who, who give mercy, who understand Christ's mercy, accept his mercy, embrace, embrace his mercy, and know what to do with his mercy, to more mercy they will be given, right? And those who have no understanding of Christ's mercy, the little bit of mercy they may get, all right, is going to be taken away from them, right? Because they don't understand the need to share in Christ's mercy, how merciful Christ is and how much he wants us to share that mercy. Again, whether it be uh, the good things our Lord gives us or the forgiveness of our sins. And so, my brothers and sisters in Christ, these are the talents that we've been given. Each of us have been given different talents. But regardless of what our individual talents are in an earthly standpoint, we can always strive to be merciful as our Father is merciful, right? And that is the essence, right? Jesus encourages us to say, be perfect as my Father is perfect, be holy as my Father is holy. We cannot, we cannot be as perfect as, we can't be perfect, right? Uh, we can't be as holy as our Father in heaven, but we can strive to take God's mercy, the mercy he gives us, and share it with others. Let us now call.